Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today my friends at Sideshow have asked me to take a look at this, the Neontech Iron Man 2.0 diecast 6 scale figure by Hot Toys. But, since I happen to have laying around a Neontech War Machine 6 scale figure also by Hot Toys, I thought I'd compare the two and give you guys a two for one deal. Let's see how they did. All right, first up as always is the packaging, and since there's two, there's a lot to discuss. You'll notice right away that they've stuck with that schematic motif that's pervasive throughout the die-cast Iron Man line. They're going all out, calling out the luminous reflective effects in these armors. They interact with black light. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, but the schematics, they work their way around to the sides of the packaging as well. It's a very neat effect. Um, you can see that there are two distinctive box designs between the Iron Man and the War Machine. Now, I've never had hands on the regular version of the Mark I Warrior Machine, so perhaps they did the same thing there. Uh, you can see on the back that we have the you know, the usual run-of-the-mill credits. Uh, that's good to know who's making your, uh, your treasured collectibles. Look at that cool thing going on on the side there of the War Machine. I love the embossed um, design work going on on the styrofoam packaging. As I pull this out, you'll be able to see that that continues on the inside. Again, that's pervasive throughout the die-cast line. All the styrofoam packaging is similarly embossed with the identity of each armor. Now again, in my experience, the slipcase um, design of the uh, War Machine is exclusive to this uh, figure. Every other Iron Man die-cast that I've experienced has been brought to me, delivered to me, using a similar design to what you're seeing here in the Neon Tech 2.0. The top comes off, out comes the styrofoam packaging, and then you can access the figure within. See again, a much more detailed rendering of that um, embossed uh, name of the figure itself. Uh, I'm not gonna open that up just yet. Let's just put this back in. I know that everybody's anxious for me to get into the guts of the figure, so let's do that now. All right, here he is, the Neon Tech Iron Man 2.0 from Iron Man 2. Um, this is for all intents and purposes, the Iron Man Mark VI armor. The armor that had a joint appearance in both Iron at the end of Iron Man 2 and in the first part of the Avengers film by Joss Whedon. Don't know why I threw that last part in there, but there it is. Now, you can see, eagle-eyed viewers will be able to see that I've already taken the liberty of installing all of the missile pods, uh, the rocket launchers, what have you, on his forearms, all except for this one, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, there's, you can, if you look over here, you can see that I'm going to show you a video of me doing that exact thing if you wanted to get a closer look of how that's done. Uh, just occupy your eyes while I'm <clears throat> not doing much else with my hands at the moment. Uh, but, here's the, um, these are the other hands here. I'm only going to need this guy. Uh, the rest of those can just go away, but we won't, uh, we won't make them leave just yet. Also, just important to note, all the batteries are already installed, but, um, um, once this video is done, I will show you guys another video highlighting exactly how that's done. Um, I may actually cut it off. Actually, let's just count on me cutting it off. Now, moving this out of the way, I'm totally going for reindeer games on this one. Uh, that's why I've got this thing out like this. And um, so this is totally a pose that I've hit a multi multiplicity of times. Um, important things to point out with this armor. This is as I said before, the same armor, as far as I can tell, no adjustments have been made from as the die-cast Iron Man Mark VI that uh, Hot Toys relatively recently did. Um, I, although I guess it's been years ago at this point. Uh, so you can expect everything to be there. The extended torso for doing torso twists, you can hit a ground pound with it. Maybe I'll do that in the photo gallery, who knows. Um, also, if you need to extend things, this, uh, this foot will, the feet will actually pop out a little bit further. So you can make those, th I'm having a hard time doing it, but it actually does extend a little bit, allowing you to do, have just a little bit more range of motion. But we don't need that today. You can see that I actually popped that mask off. Let's get that back where it's supposed to be. Uh, what we really need is to just be able to get him in this iconic, Reindeer Games pose. Now, I'm gonna look in here just to be on the safe side, just to see. And yeah, I wish that I had taken the opportunity to show you, but if you grip this ball joint, this massive ball joint that's right in here, then you can 
rotate this back around and then turn the upper arm in such a way that you're able to get the pauldron a little bit closer to home, so to speak. A little bit more up top so that that thing's not disappearing behind him. Um, that might just be a little bit more attractive. Uh, before I go any further, I want to pop this hand off and put back on his repulsor palm. That's going to be important later, as you'll, as you'll see. Again, this is my first time trying this pose without the rocket pod on. I have, I've switched out. You can see that there's a rocket pod right here. There should be one right here as well, but because we're using this hand for the repulsor blast, if I were to substitute it for this, this bit here extends a little bit further towards the hand than than the, than the sealed up um, version of it on the gauntlet. So if you look at the scene in the film, you'll notice that you can't see that anyway. The camera blocks it. So this should be perfectly fine to the average collector. Now, I'm gonna just noticing that this thing keeps wanting to pop off. I think that I've done something in inaccurate there, so I'm gonna have to fix that later. Now also notice that I've left these guys off. Um, let's see if I can find them. I put them right over here. These little bits of the armor I'm leaving off because at the end of the pose, I want to be able to turn on the lights. Actually, now that I think about it, since this has a closed fist, I don't actually need to have this one off. So let me find the left version and pop that right in there. Cool. So we're good to go with that. Now, move this up, rotate. I'm going to move that out of the way. See how great that is. Look how just that swivels out. There's just a double hinged little piston right there that just, uh, piston's probably not the right word, but a little um, little lever right there that swivels out so that you can move this thing up without running the risk of damaging your figure. Now, I want to rotate this guy around and bring that up. So that's about, oh, breaking my own rule there. You see how I was like lifting from here, which puts a lot of pressure on that joint here. When you're rotating, rotate from the top. So. trying to see what I can do with this head. Will this neck twist? Yeah, the neck twist just a little bit. That's just going to give us just a little bit more room. And I think that this is not quite going to work out the way that I wanted it to. So I'm going to take the opportunity to move this back down, bring this arm up towards the front a little bit more and rotate that hand around. Now, see where I'm looking here, I'm getting a particular angle, but there, that's just to give you an idea, just to <clears throat> let you look at that. So now that we've got this where it needs to be, uh, now I can start working on just basically fine tuning because oddly enough, these legs are kind of at the width that I want them to be. Maybe just a slight bit less of a separation there because you're getting, you're getting a good solid look at that uh, groin area as opposed to, um, so I just want to rotate that just a little bit. Make a move, Reindeer Games. Tony Stark one-liners. Man, there needs to be a Reddit for that, if there isn't already one. I'm moving back around here now because I just wanted to get a look at this. See how that was down? I don't want it down. I want that nice, see how, you gotta be careful with that because it looked to me like that was where it was supposed to be. And then I just looked up and saw that gap and was like, oh, no, let's put that back up there. Now, one of the things I, that I probably should point out is that I'm, I'm doing what I do and that's I'm being careless. I am handling this figure without gloves. So that means that when I get it all done, I'm going to have to totally wipe it down because I'm leaving mad fingerprints all over this thing. Uh, that's just not cool. I'm, uh, I'm not happy with that. I noticed right away that uh, how easily that it reads fingerprints. And, but putting that aside, wow. Pretty much what I came to expect. I've got the Mark VI, so it's not my first rodeo with this thing. Glorious, great figure. Okay, love this to pieces, but move over, Tony. It's time for rodeo to come into play.
Oh, but wait, there's more. Oh my god, I almost forgot this and I can't believe that I almost forgot it. But there are some things up here that need to be replaced as well for the full-on War Machine posture. War Machine. <laughs> for the full-on Reindeer Games pose. Uh, but these guys swap out. Ain't that cool? And they can be replaced by fully deployed projectile launchers, I guess, for lack of a better term. And these lift up to reveal even more rockets. This guy, man, is possibly the proper war machine, at least in this film. Uh, look at that. Dang. Look at that. Magnetized, man. They just stop, pop right into home there. But this is just awesome. Lift that up, lift that up. Kind of bring that in a little bit more and just, uh... yeah, I like that a lot. Okay. Now we're done. Now we can bring in War Machine. Okay, here he is, the Hot Toys Neon Tech War Machine from Iron Man 2. So much going on with this paint. I think that you can probably even see in this lighting in front at this distance of a shot that um, the difference in the the efficiency of the surfaces, there's a much, quite a bit of a contrast here between the glossier finishes and these more matte finishes at the forearm, at the biceps, at the front of the mask, all over the place on the legs. Uh, it's just a really gorgeous contrast, very inspired, and I just like it. It's just, it's just a nice departure from the norm. I never got my hands on the initial release of the War Machine Mark I, uh, the diecast. So I don't recall if there was a similar bit of a, of a matte finish to these body parts, if that carried over from this, or if this is just something brand new from this figure. If it's the latter, then yeah, very cool on them. Anyway, quite a few accessories, not as many as, Iron, as the Iron Man figure, but still respectable. You got this cannon, that's gonna go on relatively easy. I'll show, I'll easily, I'll show you how to do that later. The ex-wife, I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to work. I don't think this pops up. No, it doesn't, unless I'm failing somehow. And there's also this gun belt. So we'll, I'm, I'm gonna put all these things on in an inset as well, but I'm gonna go off camera right now and install these batteries because I think it's very important that we, uh, that we highlight this figure as best as we can. And that will be achieved more thoroughly if we have the light up feature in play. So here we go. All right, now that we have all the batteries in there and um, basically the primary components uh, plugged in, I'm just gonna go ahead and see what this guy can do. Uh, I've really mounted him in there pretty hard on that uh, stand, so I'm just gonna really carefully pull that off, uh, make sure that he's nice and stable, and he is, and let's get to work. I want him to be firing this way. Now these are really robust figures. They're, they're designed, they're built and designed in such a way that most of their components are breakaway. I mean, if you try really hard, don't get me wrong, if you try really hard, you can break it. But there's quite a bit going on here that will help to prevent you from doing that. Case in point, see how that ball joint just popped loose? That's because I didn't read the directions and I didn't take into account just how far I could go with this. Now, it's the nature of the beast with pretty much anything um, armored from a current film that what you see on camera is not going to be able to rep be replicated in the practical. The reason for that is that collisions occur in real life that will not occur in a digital file. And that's what, when you're looking at War Machine on screen, most of what you're seeing is digital. Yeah, sure, there are some bits that are not, but for the most part, yeah, War Machine's a digital file. I'm gonna have him leaning forward, leaning into the fight, looking down this arm, and by leaning him forward there, see, I'm able to get his head to peer over the top of that armor. Otherwise, if you just turn it, See how it collides there? But if I lean him into the fight, then it can break, then it can break free. And I think that, I think what I'm not liking is that this is the forward leg. And I think that I wanna be able to move this one back. Look at that, look at all that play you get in those feet, boy. 
That is just awesome. I've done enough poses with War Machine doing the all guns blazing routine. Both in How to Be a Poser and on my own channel. I just want to experiment with doing something new this time. Slide this over, rotate that around and bring this barrel into play. Now you'll notice that this pops out. That's fine because it pops right back in. Right now, actually, I'm just kind of digging, kind of feeling this, especially when you get that head down, kind of like he's got his business face on. Very cool stuff. Let's just see if I can't rotate this cannon around a little bit more just to fire in the same direction that that is going. Spin that. Yeah. He's got a definite target that he's working right there. Ooh. Yeah, that's kind of rad. Okay, so that's the thing about this is, and let's just move this out of the way, is that for lack of a better term, it's way too action-y compared to the more stoic uh, position that Tony Stark is in here. It's a pretty basic pose that I've got going on here, and I'm comfortable with that. Other people may not, and I may very well get flamed for it, but I'm just kind of going to leave it like that because you start small and then you work your way up, especially when you're building your photographs. Now, again, having... I haven't said that, I kind of want to experiment with this guy. Work some of these joints here in the manner for which they were intended. I'm gonna pop this guy up, I'm gonna pop this guy up, give him some clearance. And let's just see how much of a bend I get in this knee. Look at that, man, that is mighty. I'm gonna lay him down on the table here. Be much more confident if I had a Cloth. If you've got a microfiber cloth, that's a probably a better way of doing this. But if you you can pop this ankle out one joint, then that gives you just a little bit more play. Yeah, that's backwards. I don't want it that way. Bring this one back. Okay, everybody, as you can see, I was able to get the Neon Tech Iron Man 2.0 into the pose that I was trying to get there, that uh, somewhat semi-kneeling pose. A modification or a blend, actually, of the two poses that I like most about this armor, one being the ground pound and the other one, of course, being the reindeer games pose. Uh, so I think that's just a nice blend, as you can see, just team, just kind of teaming up with Rhodey. Rhodey just standing tall, having the high ground, really providing him with cover. Iron Man sort of, sort, sort of kind of evoking that bit right when he um, busted loose the laser beams at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the battle. Uh, just popped up the um, the bomb pods there at the end uh, just to uh, just to give a little bit more flair to War Machine. And really, for me, this just is the epitome of what I would want to have these two guys doing on my shelf. Uh, we're not quite 100% there yet. Um, I've turned off uh, one of these lights. I'm just, uh, but I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do next is I just really want to do the last thing that I need to do to make this just the perfect. Uh, display and that's to get all this going right here. So um, let's turn on the juice, as it were. Okay, so we've got all the lights on. That's going. Now there's just one more thing that we need to do in order to make this absolutely perfect, and that's to dim all the lights, douse the side light, and and there you go. I think that people find it way too easy to dismiss the Neon Tech armors as simply being a gimmick. Um, I think what we're seeing here, for me, is just a way for this blacked out style of the Iron Man armor to really call attention to the lines and the design of the armor itself without the distraction of multiple colors and whatnot. Um, the Neon Tech effects, they merely enhance the overall design. The overall shelf presence of the Neon Tech armors is one that's really, really attractive. And since there are a total of three of them available, um, if you get all three and have all three on a shelf, it, it will look absolutely stunning, especially if you hit it with a really cool um, UV LED light bar like I have here. 
One of the things that sharp-eyed viewers will likely notice is how the neon effects on the Iron Man figure seem to go a little bit towards the green side. That's just a natural occurrence with the uh, black light. The, the bluish nature of the black light interacts with that yellow and creates that green. I don't find it unattractive. I actually like it quite a lot. It goes really well with the orange in the War Machine armor. I will be very surprised if Hot Toys decides to continue the Neon Tech line. I think they're going to draw the line here at just the three armors that they've done so far, which is fine. They're the primary three armors from Iron Man 2, if you discount the Mark V, of course. But the three colors that we've got make for a really attractive color palette, and I really think that it's all we need. That's about it, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of these figures in the comments below. And until next time, be good to your plastic. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.